for joining me for Veg with Lisa live. I'm Lisa. This is most definitely going to be obviously live because I didn't have time to clean my stove. And today I am going to do a little lentil show and tell. And then I'm going to show you how and why to make an absolutely delicious pot of lemony lentil soup. But before we get started, please do say hi, type in the comments so that I know that you're here and that you can see me and that you can hear me. And okay, first of all, these are split red lentils. I'm not going to use those. I used those last week. I'm going to use these instead. Why with the lentils again? Well, first and foremost, as always in my book, because lentils are absolutely delicious. And if it's not tasting good, it's no good, right? Secondly, it is so easy, it's inexpensive, it's cheap to pick up some lentils and have them on hand. And when you have your own ingredients on hand, you're more likely to cook at home. And it's much easier when you cook at home to eat healthier and in line with your own health goals because canned soups are often full of all kinds of junk that we don't need to get into here. Uh, and fourthly, lentils are oh so good for you. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Okay, but before I get into all that, I want to get started cooking. And by the way, I was not kidding. I did not have time to clean my stove. This is definitely live TV. Mary and Curtis, it is great to see you. Thank you for joining. So I'm going to get out my favorite soup pot here and get it going on the stove. And this lentil soup starts with just some extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. So lemony lentil soup is what we're making. And then we're going to have a little lentil primer. So, so, so simple. Onions. Super, super easy. Carrots in the soup pot. I'm going to let these saute while I do a little show and tell. So these are the kinds of lentils that I'm using today. Sometimes these are called brown lentils and sometimes they're called green lentils. So I used split red lentils last week and a lot of people asked me a lot of questions so I thought I would just do a little show and tell. These are brown or green lentils. They're pretty interchangeable. The deal with these is they, they, kind, they pretty much hold their shape when you cook with them. They will get a little soft but they won't get all mushy like some lentils will. So I'm going to show you more about that in a second. These are the kind of lentils that I made the cumin red lentil soup with last week. And if you missed that, you'll find that video down the screen in my, on my Facebook page, down the page. These will get mushy when you cook with them. So the soup we made last week, we pureed. I wanted it to be kind of mushy and creamy. These are often used as well for curries. Marianne, I think you like a curry. If you like curry, these are lentils that are great to use because they get, they just get mushy and they get all mm, creamy and curry-y. Okay, now my supermarket when I went today didn't have all the fancy schmancy kinds. You'll almost always find the green or brown lentils and the split red lentils. By the way, sometimes you can find these whole. They're the same thing. They just take a little longer and maybe a little more liquid to cook. So I just went out and got on Mr. Google and I don't know how to do this. The words may be backwards to you. <laughs> I need an intern. But here are some kinds. Hello, Emily. Emily asks, are these like Barbara Streisand's movie? Bada bing. That was yentl, not yentl. Lentil, Emily. Good question though. Okay. These are fancy schmancy puy lentils. They are sometimes called French lentils. Yeah. These are sometimes called beluga lentils because they're like caviar. They're very, very, very fancy. These are the main kind of lentils. Split red lentils, which I already showed you. The brown or the green lentils, which we're going to use today. The French lentils, ooh la la. And the little black lentils, these are like little baby black lentils. And that's why they're called beluga lentils because they're like caviar. So are these lentils interchangeable? Yes and no. These are going to get mushy for your pureed soups or your curry. 
And the Pui lentils hold their shape really well. They're good for salads. The black lentils hold their shape really well. They'll, they're good for um, lentil bolognese. The green lentils, brown lentils, interchangeable names, they hold their shape pretty well, and that's what we're going to use today. Okay, what about all these other things? Oh, can you hear my, woohoo, my mirror applause? is going crazy. So one thing I love about this recipe is you buy the, the lentils, you keep them on hand so they're always on your shelf. And really, all else you need is carrots and an onion. Oh, Rob, Rob is blaming Zuckerberg for being late. Is that why your sister's not here too, Emily? Is she blaming Zuckerberg? Thanks for being here, Rob. Carrots, onions, lentils, lemons, and some herbs. That is all you need for this. And I'm guessing that most of you either already have all those things or you can easily procure those things and have them on your shelf so you're setting yourself up for success. And as we talked about last week, apparently you can buy carrots and onions and things like that all prepped and ready to go at Trader Joe's. So fantastic. Okay, I got that going in the pot. Then, oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. You might need some of this, some vegetable stock, which you can either make or buy. So I'll show you that in a second, but let me get it going. Onions, carrots, veggie stock, and then because I don't like to use all veggie stock, I also like to use a little bit of water. Yeah. So just a word about this stock. I A couple weeks ago, I highlighted a brand called Bone & Broth. I don't have anything to do with these brands, but I'm really picky about the ingredients on these products. So when you buy veggie stock, if you're gonna buy it and not make it yourself, you gotta read the ingredient list. I found this one at Trader Joe's. It's organic. And listen to this. Water, carrots, celery, tomatoes, leeks, sea salt, onion powder, garlic, parsley, bay leaves, and thyme. Thumbs up, clean ingredients on this. No sugar, no flavors, no dextrose, no oils. So if you're gonna buy your own broth, which I do, again, hit the easy button, have this on hand, read the label, and make sure there's nothing bad in it, and this one's nice and clean. Okay, so the soup is going. I like to put a really good little bit of black pepper in here as well and about those herbs. Where did they go? Here they go. Bay leaf. Yeah, I'm gonna to toss a bay leaf in here. Ooh, that's a big one, why not? Go big or go home, right Emily? And then also, I love thyme with lentils. So I just went out into my garden and I picked this spring of thyme. If you don't have it in your garden, you can use dry. That would be fantastic too. Let's talk about what is indeed a lentil? Because as you notice on my little cheat sheet, there's also some yellow split peas. There's some green split peas. I made soup with this a couple weeks ago. Well, I tell you, I did a little bit of research ahead of time and legume is the umbrella term. That's fancy, isn't it? So legume is the umbrella term. And that includes all kinds of beans and peas and lentils. Now, pulses are a subset of the legume umbrella term, and they are the dried seeds of the legume plant, which includes peas and lentils. So everything on here is a pulse. These split peas, this green pea is actually a pea. This yellow pea is actually a pea, so it's not a lentil. Ah, oh, is anybody else just completely confused besides me? You know what, here's what I say. Don't worry about it. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Just buy some lentils and then you can call them pulses. You can put them under your own umbrella. You can do really whatever you want with them, but just make some soup. Ah, okay. Now, while this, we would bring that to a boil and then we would add our lentils. Watch this. So these are the green, the green or the brown ones. Remember, don't use the, the, the split red ones for this because, well, you can do whatever you want, as Rob likes to say, but it, it won't be the same. It'll get all mushy and yeah. Do that with the cumin lentil soup that I made last week or do that with a curry. 
So the lentils went in the pot. I'm gonna wait to put my salt in because sometimes that slows the cooking of beans and legumes. Because a watch pot doesn't boil, I'm gonna not look at it. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it the side eye and I'm gonna tell you some benefits of lentils. This is why we don't wanna to get too carried away with what they're called because they're so nutritious, all of them. They almost all have a similar nutritional profile. Or I cut my elbow off. One cup of cooked lentils of any variety has almost 18 grams of protein. Ask me where I get my protein, it's in my lentil soup pot. Iron, if you eat a mostly plant-based diet or even if you don't, we tend to be deficient or low in iron these days. Lentils are a fantastic source of iron. Phosphorus, potassium, manganese, copper, folate, they're a really, really good source of folate. And they're a really, really good source of fiber. Why do we need fiber? Remember, most of us get enough protein in this country. What we're deficient in is fiber. So lentils have a fantastic amount of fiber, which helps us have a healthy gut, which helps, helps us have a healthy immune system, which also helps us have healthy poops. And do, who doesn't want healthy poops? Okay, this watched pot is most definitely not gonna boil. So by the magic power of television, I made, oh, baby, baby, baby. Look at that, I'm getting a lentil facial. Yeah. Mm, I made some of this earlier and it's been sitting on the stove just waiting to show you. I wish you could smell it. It is absolutely delicious. So all of those nutritional things that I told you about are really important because it's February and it is American Heart Month. All of those things, lentils, fiber, are good for your heart, right? So if we eat more legumes, whatever you want to call them, lentils, pulses, peas, beans, we'll, we'll get to beans next week, but this week lentils, they are all fantastic for reducing your cholesterol, for giving you better digestion. Um, the folate and the manganese are really, really good for your heart. And, and guess what? They can also help you lose weight because of all that fiber, you'll be really full. All right, let's do this, shall we? Let's see, where is, oh, well, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. This is probably gonna be kind of messy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks absolutely delicious. Let me get my spoon. Let me see if I can turn you back up here so you don't have to look at my messy stove. All right. Oh, oh, God, this is called lemony lentil soup for a reason I almost forgot. Squeeze in a really, really generous, 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 generous squeeze of lemon, and then you probably will want to add some salt. Now, you know what? Depending on the broth that you buy, you may not need very much salt at all. And also remember that we get most of our excess sodium from processed foods like convenience foods and packaged foods, not from your own salt shaker. Mm. I tell you what, couldn't be easier. Onions, carrot, lentils, veggie broth, bay leaves, thyme, lemon. So easy to set yourself up for success and have these things on hand and make a pot of lemony lentil soup. Let's give it a taste. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. American Heart Month, and remember, beans, legumes, lentils, pulses, all of those are fantastic for your beater and your ticker. Patsy, thanks for joining. Thank you all for joining me for Veg with Lisa Live. If you have any questions about the best way to have a healthy heart, regardless of your genes, shoot me a message and let's have a chat. It's what I do when I'm not eating lentil soup. See you next week. Bye. Hi, Susan.